you are an entrepreneur, a professional, a speaker, or a coach, and although you've come a long way, it's time for you to take it to the next level. We've got you. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. We'll help you use authority and influencer marketing to build your business stronger and faster by publishing a book. You'll hear from guests that are thought leaders in sales, marketing, networking, communication, social media, promotion, and business leadership. Let's do it. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. And now your host, the extraordinary word ninja, Kim Thompson Pinder. Welcome to the Author to Authority Podcast. I'm your host, Kim Thompson Pinder. And I'm so excited to announce that in August, we will be having the 400th episode of the Author to Authority Podcast. And in celebration of that, I have decided to do the top 25 episodes of the Author to Authority podcast for the whole summer. And we will celebrate the 400 about mid-August, so there'll be a couple of episodes after that. And I chose these episodes because they were the ones that I just personally felt were the ones that gave tremendous amount of value that were going to help you as an entrepreneur, professional, a speaker, a coach to move your business forward. These were value-packed episodes that are just going to give you action steps that are just going to really propel you to the next level. So I'd love for you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this top 25 episode. Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. This is the third episode from Potapalooza, and I can, I have a hard time saying that name, but it's been an exciting journey so far. I love this concept of, you know, getting paired with someone. Now, yes, obviously, you know, we were allowed to choose who we wanted. So, you know, Steve chose me, I chose him because we knew we'd be a good fit for, you know, he'd be a good fit for the for for you the audience. And so I'm excited to have him on here today because he's going to be talking about thinking differently, speaking differently, and how you use that to sell more. Now, Steve has been performing on the live stage since the age of 6, and that's over 30, 53 years ago. He's a fellow Canadian. I love interviewing fellow Canadians. He's an award-winning global speaker. And for over 30 years, he's been training and mentoring executives, thought leaders, and professional speakers from around the world to be able to deliver high-impact keynote speeches and make money from it at the same time. So welcome to the show, Steve. Well, thanks so much, Kim. Glad to be here. Thanks for selecting me out of the group. (laughs) So, Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, how did you get in? Like, obviously, you've been performing for a long time. But how did you get into training and mentoring people in in speaking? So I started playing music as a child, about six years old. And and I started playing, you know, on, on stages and on TV and that kind of thing. And I joined a band or formed a band in my teens. And we played around the country and we, we were doing, you know, doing well. And it was fun and it was great and, and it was everything it should be. And then one time I saw a video of Zig Ziglar mm-hmm. and I had never heard of him. I had never, I didn't even know that speaking was a thing. And, and I'm watching this guy and I think he's got, you know, no equipment. He's got no bandmates to worry about. He's not, you know, he's not performing to a drunk audience. Like he's got real people in the audience and he's just showing up, opening his mouth and then going away again. I want to do that. I want that job. So, so there was a big training organization that I had joined that to teach me how to do that. And I stayed with that organization for a while and I ended up becoming an instructor with them. But the problem is I didn't really believe in what they taught. I did it because I was part of their organization. Yes. And what happened was one day before I'd ever coached anybody, 
I was in the back of the classroom and I was what's called a graduate assistant, which means I had done the program and now I'm in the back helping administratively. And the instructor came to me and he said, Steve, would you like to try coaching somebody? And I said, yeah, sure. So I hadn't watched this instructor for a couple of years and I had in my head all the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like. And when I watched him coach, I would say, oh, I would do it that way too. And sometimes I'd say, I wouldn't have done it that way. You know, so I had in my own head how I was going to do this. And so the student they put in front of me was the toughest one in the entire thing. It was a 13 week program. There's about week six. And and this guy didn't want to be there. His boss had sent him there. He never participated. He was just awful, you know, and he got in front. And of course, I'm thinking, of course, I get the toughest one, right? I get the toughest one. And so he gets up there. And within about three minutes, I had that guy opened up like Tony Robbins on steroids. I mean, he started. He started sharing and he started crying and he started laughing and he like everything inside of him came out and and he never went back. He never reverted back. And so that's what I I call that a moment, because what happened to me in that moment is I said, I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm good at this. And so I left that organization. And I started my own and I've been training coaches and speakers ever since. And, and it's a little bit different than, you know, how to sell from the stage, although that does, that does occur, but it's really about how do you take whatever's inside you, whatever's there and how do you share it with an audience, whether it's virtual, whether it's live, or even if it's a prospect or a boardroom, how do you share that in a way that reaches past people's intellect and into their imagination? and changes them at a visceral level. And, and so that's the gift that I have. And that's, that's what I do. So I got a question for you. Yeah. You said you're on TV as a kid. Would I have known any of the shows you were on? No, it was, I, no, it was all local TV shows. In <laughs> fact, the very first one that I was on, I was about six years old. And what had happened was I was at a Christmas party with my family, my mom and dad and, and all my cousins, and we all played guitar. And of course, I'm, I was a very small, little skinny six-year-old with, you know, big thick glasses. And, and I could barely hold this guitar that I was playing, but I could play it quite well. And there was a lady next door who was the host of a local TV show on Rogers Cable. Mm -hmm. And she happened to be there. And she said, I want that little boy on my show. (laughs) And so we said, okay, so the next week they took me down to the studio and I got to play on, on the TV show. And here's this, you know, skinny little guy with big glasses playing, you know, really crazy guitar. And so I just, from there, I did, you know, some local, local things. And when, when we started the band, wherever we would tour into different parts of Canada, the local TV stations would interview us, that type of thing. No major shows, no, no big stardom. Although we did have a fan club with a limousine. That was cool. Oh, I love it, Steve. It's just because, you know, we're both from Ontario, right? So if it was even a semi well known show in Ontario, I might have seen you on it. So I don't know. I'm not even sure that you're even remotely old enough to remember those days. I don't know. Well, I'm a lot older than I look. Is that right? (laughs) No, they were they were just local local TV shows. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I know that you want to let you loose here. Because I know you have such tremendous value that you're going to be able to share with the audience. And, you know, the audience is because, you know, we had what a total of maybe two minutes talk before you came on. So at least audience that's listening right now is entrepreneurs, professionals, speakers, and coaches. So these are, you know, from solopreneurs to, you know, small business owners, professionals like real estate agents, financial advisors, and of course, speakers and coaches. So what advice do you have for us today? And I'm gonna let you lose to speak for a little bit. Okay, cool. I mean, there's so much that we could talk about, right? So, so my mind is going to this, you know, I meet so many coaches, speakers, consultants, authors, all the people we know, and they, they, they try so hard to differentiate themselves. They try hard to stand out by differentiating themselves. And they do it this way. They, they always talk about the same things. So, so for example, if, if we have a coach, let's say a, a business coach, and we line that business coach up on the wall with 15 other business coaches. And if I asked that one coach, I said, tell me why I should choose you. 
The answers that are going to come back almost always fall into one of these categories. Either they're going to say something about their experience. I've been in the business for 20 years. Or they're going to say something about their credentials. Well, I'm a certified this, or you know, I've been trained in that. Or they're going to say something about their story. Well, I have a unique story. I've been there and done that, and I've lived it myself. Or they're going to talk about their service. Well, I take my clients very seriously. And it's going to be something in there that they're going to use. And then if I go to the next coach and I say, tell me why I should choose you, they're going to use different words, but they're going to say exactly the same thing. They're going to use the same parameters. And so what I try and help coaches understand is that what you perceive to be a differentiator is not. It might be a sales feature, but it's not a differentiator and it's making you look and sound exactly the same as everybody else. And so then the question is, well, what, what is a differentiator? And a differentiator is, is what I call this. It's, it's being able to demonstrate your unique understanding of your prospects or your client's condition from a perspective they have never considered before. And let me give you a ex- very simple example of this. Okay. I go, you know, when I'm speaking all over, I'll ask the audience this question. I'll say, I'll put up your hand if you or somebody you know is in the market for a tennis instructor. Now, you know, Kim, when if I have an audience of 100 people, how many hands do you think go up? Here in Canada in the middle of winter? None, right? I mean, none. Right now and then I might get one. Okay. And so then what I'll do is if there's, let's say, 100 people, as an example, I might say, you know, there's 100 people here. I'm going to guess that at least 30 of you are either in the market for a tennis instructor right now, or you know somebody who is. And so, so Kim, let me ask you, are you in the market for a tennis instructor? Nope. Nope. Okay. So then, and I don't know if you're, if you're going to qualify for this or not, but let's see. I want to tell you about a guy named Brian. Brian came to me about 17 years ago and he said, Steve, I'm, I'm going to all the networking groups, you know, the chambers of commerce and the BNIs and all of the groups. And he says, I'm collecting all the cards and shaking all the hands and making all the phone calls and meeting all the people. And he says, I'm just not getting the business that I need. I said, well, Brian, what do you do? He says, I'm a tennis instructor. So we taught Brian this fundamental principle. And that is that you don't actually have to be different from anybody else who does what you do. You, but you do have to appear to be different from everybody else who does what you do. And this is what we teach coaches, speakers, authors, consultants. You don't have to be able to be different from anybody else, but you need to be able to appear to be different. And so you appear to be different by changing the way you think about your market a little bit and changing the way you speak about yourself a little bit. So if you saw Brian today, you said, Brian, what do you do? He'd say, well, You know how sometimes kids have so much energy and they're bouncing off the walls and the parents have no idea what to do with these kids. They say, well, what I do is I take take kids of any age, bring them on a tennis court and I absolutely exhaust them and I hand them back to their parents. (laughs) So let me ask you a question, Kim. Do you know somebody who might be in the market for a tennis instructor? I asked the audience that question and everybody's hand goes up. And so here's here's the point is with, with that example, You know, Brian was telling people he's a tennis instructor and I have this kind of course and I teach that kind of course and this is what I do and this is where I do it. And every single, you know, I mean, it's not like there's a bunch of tennis instructors, you know, at all the BNIs and all the chambers of commerce, but people don't understand how it relates to their life. So when he changes the way he speaks and changes the way he thinks, he thinks about his market a different way. He speaks about himself a different way, matches those two things together. And all of a sudden he goes from, I'm not interested to tell me more. Yeah. Right. And so results driven. Well, yes, yes. And it's results driven. And here's the thing, two things. Number one is it's results beyond what's expected. So the big, the big challenge here is as coaches and as consultants, and even as speakers, what I believe we need to do is we need to understand like the first level of expectation of our clients, which is the known problem they have. People are going to go to a coach because they have a problem to solve. People are going to hire a speaker for their convention because they want a specific outcome. People are going to hire a consultant because they have a problem to solve. And that's fine. We need to know what those problems are. But more than that, we need to know the next level of problem that our client doesn't realize. And that is so with Brian, the tennis instructor, that people know that they, you know, they only going to hire a tennis instructor if they want to learn tennis. And like you said, really in Canada in winter, well, in Canada in winter is when we need the tennis instructors the most, because that's when the kids are in the house. And so we need to understand the next level of need with our market. Okay. Mind blown. (laughs) 
It's spinning. I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, good. Good. One of the things that I love about being a podcast host is how much I learn in the process. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I get that. You know, I, I work really hard to bring in, you know, very high level experts like yourself. And when they share these types of things, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I got to write this down because this this is something I need to think about and then how I apply it. I want the audience just to stop for one very quick second because what Steve said here is very powerful, not just as a speaker, not just even getting on stages, but even, you know, he just gave you a massive nugget that's going to help you take your business to the next level. Because when you can differentiate, you know, uh, my book back there, Author to Authority, one of the things I talk about is differentiation. And, you know, you don't, you don't go into a store and look at in a bin of light bulbs and carefully pick through them to find one. You, you grab the top box, you say, okay, they're not broken and you take them, right? It's the same in business. If you look like every other person who does what you do, guess what? If you're at the top of the bin that day, you'll get chosen. If not, you're going to sit in the bottom for a while. 100%. And you know what's so interesting about that is the more we try and differentiate ourselves using the same techniques as everybody else, the more we look the same. Mm-hmm. I've got a uh, webinar that I that I do uh, about how to stop trying to sell your books as an author. And I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, and it's really not about not selling your books. But what it's about is how do you get your book to sell you? How do you get your book? You know, when somebody buys a twenty dollar book or nineteen dollar book on Amazon or whatever, how do you get it so that when they read that book, they say, "I need to speak to this one." I need to talk to this one. I need to hire this one. And so, you know, I love the nature of your podcast, you know, from author to authority, because there are so many people, and you know this, Kim, you know, there's so many experts who write books. And in those books is incredible wisdom. And then we spend, we often spend so much of our time and energy trying to sell our books. And it's not a bad thing to sell your books. Of course, you want to sell your books. But that's the short money that, and that's the short impact because people will buy your book and they can read what's in it, but they can only implement at a certain level. And if we want to change lives, if we want to impact change, if we want to facilitate growth in the, in the community and humanity, people need more than our books. And so our books need to sell us so that people can come to us and avail themselves of the greatness that we really can offer so that we can facilitate the change that we were actually meant to change. The book is an amazing tool and it does position us as an author offer as, as an authority and, and it can make some money and it can affect people's lives. But I've always believed that a book is a limited, it's a limiter. Okay. So here's an example of, you know, limitations of our books that we write. And, and so it's like this, if you were flying from, you know, Toronto to Vancouver, how much, how much comfort would you have knowing that the pilot had read the book? And that's pretty much the, you know, the extent of the knowledge, as opposed to working with the proper coaches, trainers, teachers, you know, to, to train them. And with us as coaches and experts and speakers and consultants and all the things that we do, we, I believe that we need to look at our work that way, especially our books, because our books are such a magnificent tool to draw people to us. And so, you know, so many people need to learn how to bring their, take their books to position them as an authority, but not to stop there position them as an available authority and teach people how to come to them. So the books need to sell us instead of us selling the books as much. Yeah. As a publisher, you know, those are the types of books that I create. And, you know, one of the things that we do throughout the book is having those natural sounding call to actions, you know, cause you can't, you're right. You can't just write the book. The person had, you have to get the person to connect with you. That's the goal of the book, right? Is to provide the value, create the relationship and then have that person connect with you to, to do more. So I, I fully agree. Now, Steve, I know we only have a couple of minutes left because of just the timing, but you are a best-selling author. So our international best-selling author, apologize. Here's a question I ask every author that's been on the show. What was the good, the bad, and the ugly of publishing your first book? Oh, I love this question. Very good question. Okay, here was the good. The good was that I got it done. And when I got it done, it felt amazing. It felt great. And 
finally felt, okay, I have something real in this world now that that I've contributed. You know that sense of pride. It's born. The baby is born. So that was the good. The bad, and I don't know how to call it bad, but here's, here's the bad. The process of writing the book was a little bit brutal because I had a publisher who ended up being how can I put this? Not exactly above board in life Mm -hmm. and in business. And so I I had the book written. They played some underhanded games that was going to cost me a whole bunch of money to do a bunch of things that didn't need to be done. So I pulled the deal. I changed the book. I changed the title. I changed the cover. I changed the arrangement of the inside. I changed it a significant amount. And I went to my attorney, my lawyer. I said, has this been changed enough? And they said, yeah, you're, you're safe. So I published the book. And what's interesting is the moment I pressed, you know, I published the book, the moment it came up on Amazon, I got a letter, an email from that publisher, a cease and desist. And in the letter, it said, I have a copy of your book. And so I went back and I said, how did you get a copy of my book? It's been on Amazon for three minutes and nobody's bought it yet. The copy you have is clearly pirated. So I'm going to counter sue you for copyright infringement. <laughs> so then there was this back and forth thing like this, you know, and we finally dropped it. But that was, that was a, you know, I guess that's the ugly. I'm going to call that the ugly. Yes. Yeah, that's the ugly, but we got it done and, and everything was fine, you know. But I think here is the bad. And 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 I think that there are a lot of publishers who, not publishers, a lot of authors who get this bad. And that is when I published the book, I expected everybody was going to buy it. And what happened is they did. My mom bought it. My sisters bought it. My clients bought it. My friends bought it, right? And and I thought, I got some great momentum here. And I'm already making plans, you know, for the next, we're going down to Florida. And, you know, I got big plans. And then, of course, everything just stopped. And, you know, kind of was a reality hit for me that, okay, I've got, I've got the book. That's great. Now what? And so that's why I actually created a webinar called You're an Author. Now what? And yeah, it's you about have a marketing plan. Right. And yes. First of all, I had no marketing plan. That's exactly right. And, and secondly, I just gave up. I mean, my expectations weren't met and they weren't unrealistic and I didn't have a marketing plan. And so I gave up and the book sat there, you know, for a long time. And then I was able to revise it and revive it. And now I use it, you know, regularly. But that letdown was, I think, the, the bad. So the good was getting her done. The baby's born. The bad was the expectations didn't meet themselves afterwards. And the ugly was going through all that process to get it done. Yes. Talk to my clients about, you know, your book is not the field of dreams, Mm. you know, where, where you build it and people just come. Yeah. It does not happen. Who knew, right? (laughs) Who knew? (laughs) Well, Steve, this has been such a wonderful conversation how can people like, do you have anything free to give away or how can people connect with you? Yeah, go to my website, steve at steve And uh, the best thing that, that I can offer is go and look at that webinar. It's an evergreen webinar. It's there. You can just go and sign up and it runs as like pre-recorded. And it's called, you're an author, now what? And it goes through some of the things we talked about today. And it's, and it's about, you know, stop selling your book as much as get your book to sell you. And it's not discouraging people from selling their books. It's it's from discouraging people from putting their heart and soul into selling their books and then being disappointed because they probably don't have a proper marketing plan because most of us authors don't. (laughs) And so it's that. So I think that's the best place to start. Go to steve at stevelowell.com, poke around in there, but you'll see there's a spot there for nonfiction authors. And, and, you know, just watch that webinar. It's about, I don't know, 90 minutes or something, but there's good stuff in there. And there's some, some good uh, material in there. Thank you so much, Steve. What a pleasure it has been to meet you and interview you. So this has been Steve Lowell and Kim Thompson Pinder on the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this episode, share it out. You've been listening to the Author to Authority podcast. The extraordinary word ninja, Kim Thompson Pinder, has helped over 200 entrepreneurs, professionals, speakers, and coaches write and publish their books that have become incredible marketing tools for their business. And many of those have gone on to become Amazon best-selling authors and have used their books to land high-level clients and get on big stages. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. 
and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at www.author2authoritypodcast.com. See you next time.